Amen. Feel ba natong presence the Lord? And kabulon. I'm still trembling in His presence. Now, let's just pray. Father, we allow you, Lord, to speak into our hearts. We believe, God, that we are in this time and season, Lord, where you're looking for people who are faithful. And I pray, God, that our hearts be prepared to receive your word. Our hearts be a good soil. Let your wisdom speak, Lord God, not mine. Let your understanding, oh God, take over, not ours, oh God. So have your way, God, tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, our title for the message tonight is A Call for Endurance and Faithfulness. Amen. In Revelation 14.12, uh, the Passion Translation. Thank you, Jay. This is a call for the endurance and faithfulness of the holy believers. Those who follow God's commands and cling to the faith of Jesus. Now, in this chapter, God was, uh, John was, uh, Jesus was revealing to John what is hap- what's going to happen in the last days. In fact, I remember a preacher before he said that the final test of the bride is going through tribulation. And while John was kanang, sana iyang gipang konsulat ni katong nasa gisulti ni Jesus ayah about the angels, the trumpets, where the coming of the beast, where people will worship the beast, that the beast will, are going to, uh, where the enemy is going to torment the people. And then he said in verse 12, he said, this is a call for endurance and faithfulness. God is calling us for these coming days for endurance and faithfulness. Amen? Who is enduring? <laughs> but who is faithful? So I was wondering, bang anong gikuan niya ang endurance of faithfulness? So I'm going to talk, to talk about it. A call for endurance. There is a call for endurance. In fact, even the first time that you have enlisted yourself into the kingdom of God, you are kanang si tawagana. Imuhangi sulod imong kagalingon into something that you are going to endure, suffer, and even go through hardships. Being in the kingdom of God is not a bed of roses. Amen? Now there's a call. A call to endure. Hebrew 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily strips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Medyo taas ni, no, actually. I hope I can finish it in 45 minutes. Now, a call. Kinsay nakadumdum sa wali ni Jorin about endurance. Hello, so this is just a sum, a kind of refresh sa wali ni Jurian sa endurance. Now, yun siya dali, the clouds, we are surrounded with clouds of witnesses. Katano, gid sila sa ato ba? Kinsa ang endure You know? But let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Na, the race? Na, the race? Ako, Lord, nasa nang a race? Nga ako na-receive kayo, it's a race between you and yourself. <laughs> Later, we will get to more about that. What is endurance? It is the ability to withstand hardship or adversity or the ability to sustain a prolonged, stressful effort or an activity, a marathon runner's endurance. It is also the ability to deal with pain or suffering that continues for a long time. So, kanang mulahutay ka despite sa kanang grabe nakalisod kayo. Lord, ang suman eh. Ba? Now, that is basically a kwan, whether it's a, a basically a kanang sana, definition of endurance. It is the ability. Each of us has the ability to withstand hardship. And each of us has tested according to what we can bear. Diba nagyong si Lord Ana? 
He will just test us sa kung unsa ang ato ang makaya. It is also the ability na why do we need to endure? Endure rather. Jesus made it clear to us that in this world we will go through trials, we will go through testing. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth. You will have many trials and sorrows. Kinsay na dagag trials and sorrows. Wow, na ko may no at least. But take heart. Ingnay mo ang kaugalingon. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. One reason why we need, why we endure is because Jesus Himself endured. If you have been enduring right now, but I let mag ask before later na. Jesus is our beautiful example. It was being sealed when he said in John 19.30, It is finished. As his last words culminating the fulfillment of his purpose here on earth. This means that it takes endurance. Endurance is necessary to fulfill our purpose. Amen? Imagine in the middle of boxing, and then wani mo na antos ang sumbag sa imo ang kontra ani ka dili na ko imagine god called you imagine if pakyao did not endure those punches would he become a world title of eight divisions he simply, he firmly provided to us not just salvation, but the capability to finish the race with endurance. What was Jesus' secret that he endured? As we read in John 4.34, Jesus said to his disciples, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. In other translation, it says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Jesus was simply saying, you know, he has a word from the Lord. He has a command. He has a destiny to fulfill. And he received it fresh from the Father. He said, this is my food. And remember when Jesus said that man does not live by bread alone, but in every word that comes from the mouth of God. What caused Jesus to endure is he has a daily and he has a constant word from the Lord or from the Father. Without, no, if you do not, if you do not know the will of God, what's the purpose of enduring? If you don't have a vision, what's the purpose of enduring? If you don't have a command, what's the purpose of enduring? Do you have a vision? Do we have a vision? Endurance is faith being tested. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7 These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise Glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. James 1, 3-4 For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. I believe one of the secrets to endure is faith. But let's define faith. Faith comes from hearing the message and the message is the word of God. Amen? Do you have faith? Do you have, do you receive message from the Lord on a constant basis? Apart from the word of God, there's no faith. 
And apart from the faith, there's no need to test. And there's no need to endure. Agree? I remember katong nati story before nga. Story siya. Gingnan siya nga. Nay dako kay bato. Nya gingnan siya nga. Itulod ang bato. Ah, uh, gingnan siya sa sa Ginoo. Itulod ng bato. So, dako kay to siya nga bato. So, sugod siya sulod tulod after one week. Tanaw niya wa magud nairog. <laughs> tulod gyud siya. After one year, after two years and three years of pushing that stone, as in gamay, anak lagi ang na nakuan na na isbog. And the Lord, gabi three years na mong ko og tinulad. Unya mora ni ang na na isbog. So na dis, meros na discourage ba? And then the Lord told him, I did not tell you to move it. <laughs> I just told you to push it. But you notice your body? For three years of pushing that stone, his body became firm of the muscle. <laughs> Hello? You might not notice it, your faith are being strengthened. It's not just, it's, sometimes it's not a matter of the result. It's a matter of what's happening inside you and in your heart. Amen? Faith tested leads to endurance. Therefore, without faith, it is impossible to endure all testing and trials. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have in Romans 5.3, but that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence. Kinsay nalipay daring nga naay kagubot si mong kinabuhi. Naay pagsulay. Knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. Pressures. So ito? Test, pressures to do, pressure to do wrong. And in trial, is pressure to give up. Kinsa yung nag-endure diri kay itong uh, gina-pressure ka nga mabuhat o sa'yo? Second Timothy 4.7 I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Say with me. Kept the faith. So I believe this is Peter na? I Paul saying that for us to endure we must keep the faith. Tingnay mo ang tapat. Keep the faith. Question, what are you endure what are you enduring for? Unsa may imo ang gilahot? Unsa kay bisaya na lahutay no? Ano pinaglalaban mo? Ba? Para kanino ka bumabangon? <laughs> Nescafe, three and one. Para kanino ka po? What? Kung saan may mga gina lahot, 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 yan. Ba? Are you enduring for the Lord or are you enduring for something else? I'm amazed because there are those who endure for many years carrying unforgiveness. Nilahutay og daladala sa unforgiveness, hatred, offense, jealousy. That's why I ask, unsa man imong gilahutayan? If that is something that will imprison you or that's something that will destroy you, give it up. <laughs> if it is for the Lord, go. Continue to endure. Amen? Okay, I ko not focus on focus. <laughs> A call for faithfulness. God is calling for faithful people. I believe that the word released by God 
earlier through Cheryl. I believe it has something to do with this. God is looking in this verse. He, the eyes of the Lord go around looking in all the earth for people who are faithful. God is looking here and he's asking who is, who are the faithful ones? To him so that he can make them, them strong. In other version, whose hearts that are that is completely his. So in this verse, the definition of faithful is ang kasing kasing, tibuok kasing kasing diya sa gino. That's why I believe God is asking us to present your heart to the altar. Because he's looking for people whose hearts is completely is. Are you willing to put that heart into the altar? Are you faithful? I said, go on. I like to bag. It's between you and the Lord. You know, I've been preparing, as I was preparing this message, the Lord, I'm a bugat man. I don't think if I can do this, but it's it's heavy for me. And that's why I'm still trembling. <laughs> God will give swift justice to those who don't give up, to those who endure. So be ever praying, ever expecting, just like the widow was with the judge. Yet when the Son of Man comes back, will he find this kind of faithfulness in his people? When Jesus comes back, See, we are in a pandemic. And I believe all of us here endure the pandemic. Amen? But who among us are faithful during the pandemic? When the Son of Man comes back, when God, Jesus, mubalik na, makakita ka siya o kanang tao ng mga faithful. Sa ganitong sa Chronicles, whose heart is completely his. What is faithfulness? According to John Beaver, he interviewed different leaders and ministers and asked them to define faithfulness or the act of being faithful. And this is what he got. Steadfast or consistent. Dependable or reliable. Loyal. No? Trustworthy, devoted, and truthful. But ingon siya, out of these definitions, nobody answered according to how Jesus defined faithfulness. And this is how Jesus defined, di na mauha. <laughs> in Hebrew, imuna or to have faith. In Greek, it is pestos or believing or trusting. But he said, there is one word that he never heard, which is very important definition, which is Jesus himself ang naghatag aning a word, multiplication. You see, John Weaver said, we can be staying for years. We can be steadfast for years. We can be loyal for years. We can be staying in the church for years. But the question is, he said, are you multiplying? I'm not talking about ninaghan kahangan na kay na disciples, but not just that. Naman tayo gitawag o fruit nga katong discipleship, na po tayo fruit that remains. Multiplication, let's look at it in parable of the talents. Matthew 25 verse 14 to 30. To the servant with five talents and gain more five, and the servant with two talents and gain more two, he said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. But to the one who has one talent, but hid his talent and gained nothing, but maintained that one talent, he said, You wicked and lazy servant. Makita natong as a story, the servant with one talent endured for years. He remained. He remained 
sa kung asa sila gibilin sa young masters. Agree? But among the three, siya ang giingnan ng wicked and lazy by just maintaining that one talent nga gihatag sa Ginoo sa iha. This talents could be uh, sa TPT version it talks about uh sa na stewardship sa money. But this talent could be also your salvation. It could be your gift. It could be what God has entrusted in your life. It could be your call, your destiny. Gitawag siya og wicked and lazy servant. What makes him lazy nga igo ra man niya gi gi keep ang isa, wan niya gi pa multiply. Pero kanong gitawag man siya og wicked? Lazy siguro kay wala, awa siya ni gibuhat. Pero what make him wicked? Nanong wicked man siya niya. Harsh kay nga word no. Sa bis- bisaya aga ni. <laughs> Unsay bisaya ana? Unsay bisaya sa wicked? Ah? Sadap. Buang buang. Like foolish na sa dano. Fool you fool mana? Wicked drug dautan? Or sa pag napamilang? Ha? Huh? Salbahis ka nga sulugon. Salbahis ug tapulan. <laughs> Gabi kay kabugat no. Kung ikaw ana ba maka when Jesus comes back kunyan ka you weak. Are you ready? <laughs> God specifically linked faithful to those who multiply. Faithfulness is not just being steadfast and staying re- or remaining for years. in your service. Because there are people who remains for years in service. But the question is, are they multiplying? Are we, am I multiplying for those years that I've stayed in the Lord and steadfast in the Lord? For pilaka years ni Modern, ano ba kayo evangelize? Hello? What does God mean by multiplication? Then the one who had been entrusted with 1,000 gold coins came to his master and said, Look, sir, I know that you are a hard man to please and you're a shrewd and ruthless businessman who grows rich on the backs of others. I was afraid of you, so I went and hid your money and buried it in the ground, but here it is. Take it. It's yours. The way I read it, ba. I was putting myself in the servant's shuba. Speaking this, mo agree mo sa ako nga he has an issue with his master? Hello? Okay. <laughs> uh, in this, kwan nate, uh, we are going to, there's going to be a, a, a sensitive na kwan nga ato ang pag-asturyahan po, no? Nga bugat. Ah, uh, Mo agree mo nga naa sa issue sa master. And so, awa e hang word. I know that you are a hard man to please. And you are a shrewd and ruthless businessman which grow rich on the backs of others and I was afraid of you. So I went and hid your money, buried in the ground, but here it is. Take it, it's yours. No be talk. Oh no no. <laughs> I don't know how you When I was reading this, ba, and I was contemplating with the Lord, the way I receive it is like, kabalo ko nga, kung ko, ano-ano niya, hadlok, mahadlok ko, basta, ako na lang gitago. I felt like there's an attitude. Attitude, girl? <laughs> attitude ka, girl? I felt like there's an attitude of the servant. Okay, mo? Wala mo. <laughs> ang geared, ganun masuko man ang iyang, kung gi, ingon na ito niya, nara, bus, oo. Oh. Niya, yeah, pag-abot diri, angered by what he heard, the master was suko, and the master said, said to him, you're an untrustworthy and lazy servant, with exclamation point. <laughs> Ambot lang na, di ba na ako ang master, no? Pero kung hihinay, sabi ito niya, pagsulti sa servant. 
Murag mas magkuan po siya, pero nga nang sukok kayo siya dali. If you knew I was a shrewd and ruthless businessman who always makes a profit, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? There's an issue of character. Magri? Untrustworthiness is a person's character. Takto ba? And God call it evil or wicked. But what makes the third servant evil? Then the one, balik ta, look sir, I know that you are, this is what I received from the Lord, no? You are not obliged to agree with me or to, but this is, this is what I, I, I received. The servant has an issue of submission. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Asay problema sa iyang kuwan ba, Master? And when I was reading this, I was reminded of a relationship between a disciple and a discipler. Let's talk about discipleship. I believe discipleship is, kind of, is a must for every Christian. But it is a must. It is a process. And in fact, God calls us to be His disciples. But somehow he sent forth disciples, people who will disciple us. And somehow the Lord sent a discipler, a leader that could be someone shrewd or ruthless or a hard man or woman. Now, I'm going to talk about submission not because for our sake as leaders. I'm going to talk about it for the benefits of us who are under authority. Last week, Pastor Jun talks about honoring or respecting different levels of respect. Those who are in authority position, those who have gift, and taas din kato, those who have character. But either way, of the three, we are called to respect, right? Even if that person has a character or doesn't have the character. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. In this, uh, Pastor Blood talk about three uh, levels of our walk with the Lord. Number one is deliverance, which is that is the our salvation experience. We are delivered from darkness and brought us to light. And then the second one is the discipleship, which is the process where the Holy Spirit will work within us. And the third one or the last one is destiny. So three Ds: deliverance, discipleship, and then destiny. We need to go through discipleship in order for us. To fulfill our destiny. And you notice when God, Jesus, tried to untie that donkey in that I ko verse. Notice Jesus did not himself go and untie the donkey. He sent two disciples. Ano dili man siya to. Okay. Uh, what is submission? Let's, let's define submission. The action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force to do the will of authority of another person. Verb used with object, submitted or submitting to give over or yield to the power or authority of another. Who is in authority? To subject to some kind of treatment or influence to present for the approval, consideration or decision of another or others. Just as we are called not to be alone in this journey, God has subject us into authority. Now, faithfulness in Sadri, comes from a place of trust and loyalty. As a Christian, it is important to be faithful to God. It is one thing to believe in Him, but it's another thing to be faithful to God. Hello? 
This shapes the way we live. Faithfulness requires us to submit our ways. Now, question, why submit? Now, I believe it started no, when <laughs> Pastor Jun asked me, why do I submit to him? And start, starting that time, <laughs> sige na rin ko kung ano to. Pero dili kayo, nag-struggle ko, nag-sapit pag ito. Lulot sa kaingon ko yun dyan. There was a time also, I remember, I asked, ambot lang ko nang natana ba ko sa iya nga? Kuya dyan, nag-submit ba ko sa iya? Pero ang iyan, tubag ato kay, dili man ako makatubag na, ikaw man. Ang yakata nga time kay, why do we submit to our leaders, to our pastor, to our disciple? Why? What is your reason for submission? Do you need a reason to submit? Kinanlan baka o grason para mo submit? Ano ang gasubmit, mangko? Do you submit? It's because he is kanang Ang ayan, or ka ng may magut siya, ng leader. Is your submission's definition is only in convenience? Is your definition of submission is only when you agree with him or with her? This has been one of the challenges and problems in the church, in our, not just in our days, but even in the past. in the history. And I believe God is trying, I don't know why he, he, he allowed me to speak about this. I'm not the, the best or the, to, to talk about it because I myself failed at times, many times. You know? Each of us was designed by God to submit into authority. Nasubag na ninyo ng why submit? Why, why nga, dili, why nga, W-A-Y nga, why submit? <laughs> why submit? <laughs> why ba? Nga nung nga submit ka, dili, why submit? Or, ikaw mo, nara sa inyo, naasa mo sa why nga W-H-Y or why nga W-A-Y sa Bisaya. Why submit? Yeah, shortcut mo na sa walay. Submit. Why submit? <laughs> Submission is absolute. Agree? Unless otherwise that authority demands something that leads to sin or spirit. Well, that's no. Well, I was typing this. Ako nga. Submission is absolute. An- yeah, na- ako, unless otherwise. <laughs> Now, Let me give you an example. See, Daniel and friends. Diba the king asked them to bow down to the idol that they created? Question. Ni bow down sila? Wala. Wala. So, sa ato pa, wala sila na submit. <laughs> Sometimes, kay, actually, actually, this topic is really <laughs> kapit itong deep and then kuan kesa ba broad kesa and what i understand about the daniel and friends they did not bow down to the king or to the idols but reading reading the scripture i never heard them speak anything against the king hello still god is the ultimate and highest authority when it comes to that Like, for example, in Anna, in no lugar kasi ang imong leader, patiyo. Patiyo ni mo. That's another thing, right? But they show their submission to the king by not speaking anything against the king. And I remember what Pastor Jun taught me, I think, three, two years ago. Or four years, in siguro ko, when I started full-time. Uh, Dugay-dugay na to. And di gina ko ni Malimtan. Storya may kami tulo at And there was an issue at to. And then, more ni mo na yung gingon sa ako. 
if you want, mundo niya notice yung life sa una. Every time he closed his mouth to speak against anything that is in authority, God promotes him. But every time he opens his mouth and speak against the authority, it demotes him. Yes, yeah. Sana tigid ako na malimtan. Dito ta sa pagatpat ana sa balay ni Lingling. Jinilin bit ako tumbay an katong gamay classmate na ko skoy. Nagblessing sa ilang balay. Nya istorya ta dito. And insa, if you want to be promoted, shut your mouth. If you want to be demoted, open it as much as you can to speak to authority. <laughs> That's why Cora, Cora was judged by the Lord. That's was a it was a picture of demotion <laughs> because he speak against Moses. Who wants to be promoted here? If you want to be promoted by the Lord, better shut your mouth against your leaders. I'm not saying that for our benefits. It's for your benefits. Amen? It has been one of the greatest or major problems and our challenges in our church, not just today, but throughout history. Matthew 24, verse 10 to 12, In the last days, many will be offended and fall away. What's the reason for that? Why? Because they fail to submit first to God and then next to man in authority. Hello? And notice that servant. Kung siya nakita sa iyang master. Ang iya rin nakita kay ang weakness sa iyang master. I tell you, you will always see weakness in your leader. But if that is your reason not to submit anymore because you see his weakness, you are doomed for destruction. Seriously, guys. <laughs> Every revelation from God that we receive, especially with regards to our destiny and purpose, is subject to authority. Let uh, give you an example. Example. See. So may ako example dre. Ako na lang self. <laughs> Ginan ko sa Gino. Magpastor ka. Mato din ko sa leader. Nako. Or my spiritual leader. Or my father. Tawag ko. Magpastor daw ko. Pastor. Pastor Irwin. Pastor John. Magpastor daw ko. Pwede karang Sunday i-ordain ko ninyo. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? <laughs> pastor, mag ordination Sunday ta, kikitawag ko ni Lord mag pastor. <laughs> Am I making sense? When you receive a revelation from the Lord, especially it speaks of your destiny and your purposes, it is subject to authority. You don't just I can make pastor mango, pastor hammock, or then I kalimot hack on Sunday. Hello? Joker no, pero. Siguro daily, wala ko ni about ana, pero. There are times we receive revelation specifically about destiny and purposes. And we tend to, what? Defy the authority that God has given us. I tell you, you cannot walk towards that destiny unless otherwise you are subject to authority. You know, man, like sa amo, every time when I concern si Kuya Jun sa akong cell group, unsay kinsa yung i cell group ba siya? Sa ako. John, si Kuan ba? Kumusta man? Pidi na to siya, ma. Hello? That's why if you think that you can fulfill your destiny alone without a leader, think twice. 
think twice. Because mag-endure yun ka. <laughs> Enduring for the wrong thing. If you haven't yet submitted yourself to a leader, please do. And by the way, our leaders are not perfect. When Jesus wants to untie that donkey, he sent imperfect two disciples. He did not come. Siya, perfect siya. He did not go. He sent two imperfect disciples. Kung siya to, yung nila, katong donkey kay, kung ano to, kanang idla ba? O niya, wala pag daw sukad na kasakay sa iyang likod. Niya, marag feeling niya, marag, dili sa, kung ang donkey, kung buhi anto ni mo, pag antay anto, pwede naman to siya mudagan mo, mag laroy laroy But after the two disciples untied the donkey, they walk with the donkey. Are we, rather, they walk with the disciples of Jesus. Wala sila naglataka. Pada itong iro na mo, nga pagbuhi. Pagbuhi na mo si iro. Ay, mura ako kan, rakit. Diundang lang kay na. Pakug. Sometimes, singa na ito na, mundang lang pag mapakug na. <laughs> ha? Dili mo na, hanto di mapakug. Pagkapakug na gani. Te, kuya. <laughs> Balik na ko. You know? He, they walk, the donkey walk with the disciples. This imperfect, ako lang klaro ho na ha, imperfect disciples. They walk with the disciples. And because the donkey walk with the disciple, Jesus sat on the donkey. The trabajo po sa disciple is to lead the disciples to Jesus. Hello? That's our job. Lead you to Jesus. But will you be like the donkey who will walk with us? Or who will walk with your leader? Or will you be like my dog, Tommy? Hulat pa mapakog. And it's because the donkey walk, nagamit siya sa ginoo. Jesus, the one sitting on the donkey, going to the temple where there is celebration. And I pray that one day when Jesus comes, we will be like that donkey whom he will sit. That is our destiny. But unless we submit to God and to authority or man, God cannot choose us in the fullness of our calling. Amen? Bugat na. Mas naman ta. Now, let me give you an example, another example. No? Nga nung importante ka yun yung submission. There was a time I was listening to Pastor Vlad. Na daw siya ibatan on, nga bago lang na-save. Nya, di ba kung sorry pag bago na save grabe kay kaon sa man. Oh, labi na bitaw kanang grabe kay yung experience sa salvation murag gusto mo witness bisag asa. Pag na evangelize uli uban ko bi mag evangelize. Karon kay na kay na ko nakakita nang excited no nga na iban na luwas no nga murag grabe enjoy mo nga luwas. But excited kuno kayo. So naggo through sila gi after siya gi gibutang siya cell group. Anya, after mga month or months ba to, grabe kaya ang passion. Ngayon sa duol siya ni Pastor Blood. Pastor Blood, my mom needs to hear my testimony, what the Lord has done in my life. Ngayon mama kay Adik, kung nasa Pika State, so I want to witness to him. I heard other. Gusto ko mo sa balay, gusto ko mo uli, kaya mag-witness ko, gusto ko mo magwali sa iya. The Lord loves him so much and I want him to, he- I want her to hear that. And Pastor Blood told, her, told him, not yet. Don't go now. Stay with our discipleship. You're not ready. No, you don't understand me. It's my mother. It's not your mother. <laughs> I mean, grab me passion. Mas na Wala mas na, ma-feel na ako ang akong burden kay mama na ako siya. 
But then he said, I'm not ready. But then he insisted. He went to the state where he, her mom is living. Kay yang walihan. After a month, nananaw silang basur blood sa TV, nakita nila ang news, there's a young man walking in the street like a fool. And he was captured and placed on a rehabilitation. And during the rehabilitation, that man was so frustrated that he gyanan niya yung ulo sa wall and he died in a rehabilitation center. Now what's my point? I don't care how much passionate you are. God doesn't care. I don't care how much passionate you are, but if you cannot submit, your passion may lead you to rebellion and eventually get you into destruction. He was so passionate, but he's not willing to listen. And he died not fulfilling his purpose. He died addict. Instead of influencing his mom, siya ang na-influence. See, there's a reason why God put a spiritual leader over us. Sometimes, their no might be so disappointing. But I tell you, their no is a protection. And notice katong servant, madlok siya, tungod sa shrewd, I'm afraid. Do you know that a person is not willing to submit? He's always afraid. Madlok mong gugko ba sigdik ko ni tan? Can you see the difference between information and asking for permission? <laughs> Sometimes, even I, I inform ko, pero wala ko gaso permission. And many of us fall into that trap. Oh, okay, na inform man ako si, si ate or si kuya. And many times, I experience nga, wala na lang head. Eventually, nakita na ako, ang sin heto po. Pag-istorya din ako. <laughs> you see, the danger of not submitting. I pray, including to myself, nga dili ko, makuha na ng ego lang ko nag-inform, pero wala ko nag-ask of permission. Because many times, you fall on that trap. David, remember last week? David was anointed and called to be the next king. But notice David, he did not force himself to be the king. He waited for the right time. But he was tested. He was tested with his submission to the present king, King Saul. You see, when God called you, you don't have to force it. Sakto? You don't have to force it. And the same goes with, I believe it, the same goes with um, destiny with regards to your <laughs> marriage. It's not, it's, it is not something to be forced. <laughs> what if kadawat ko nga magbinyo ko karwisip ko word magbinyo ko unya gingon ako ang leader nga kana ayo sa or ayo sa upag uban especially kay wala pa kagingna ni Lord kanus ah Naka receive lang kang menu ka pero oh uh, menu ko niya siya ako menu ang pero kanon sa wala pa ka na receive kanon sa Ginabalik-balik yun yun ni Pastor Jun Samo Sao na I'm not I'm not kanang ginapugan ta mo nga malipay <laughs> or nga dili mo makakuan 
You know, for many years in this house, we've seen, we've seen, uh, kanabitang falling into the trap of romantic deception. And I believe, nagpasalamat yun ko, personally. Kuya, salamat. Since college, nga gabantay siya sa amo. I really thank him and I really thank the Lord for that. That's why I'm not Wala ko na dili ko si tawag na. Kana depressed nga single pa ko. Sana all. Wa <laughs> sige lag sana all, sana all, sana all. Because I believe I am in my season of walking in God's fulfillment in my life. And every time we talk about, I talk about purpose, I talk about marriage with Pastor John, he will always just tell me, Una imong calling. It will just come. Adam just submit to God by, sa? Yatiman niya ang garden. And then the Lord just gave him wife. Anyway, So sometimes, no, we are Balik taka David. David did not force himself. Uy, ako naman ang sunod nga king. Katungingon pa ni Kuya John, gingnan siya sa iyang mga kuhan nga. Uy, pat, okay, chance na hindi mo pati yan. Ah. And many of us lose Our appetite for submission just because we come into disagreement with our leaders. But actually, submission starts when there is disagreement. It's so easy to submit kung convenient, kung okay kay ka, kung benefits sa sa'yo mo. Dali, rakayo yung, oh, yes, di, sige. But what if it's not in your favor that you think it should be? Diyan so good. Moro gina kung gina ko na. Kung gina ko ni Lord Ani, gina ko na ako akong spiritual leader, niya ningon siya, no. I trust the Lord that what He has promised, He is faithful to do it. And if my leader failed to discern, and he said, no, then that's not my My job to correct. It's God's job to correct my leader. Not my job. My job is to submit. Hello. I remember Pastor John Beaver said, Nagwali ang pastor. Nagdagan ka siya dili mo. Di siya ka-agree siya ang pastor. ba? You like kasi siya principal. Say, I'm good. Mag-anak ta, mag-argue ta principles ba? Not wrong. It's technically right. Pero ginasulayan lang yun atong kasingkas. So di siya mag-agree. Daghan kayo siya o gano'n. Di siya ko agree. And then he heard the Lord and said, the Lord said, John, kulbana rin siya. When the Lord calls your name, you better get kanang kulba. Yes, Lord. He said, did I call you to be, did I call you as the senior pastor of this church? He said, no, Lord. That's why there are things nga akong isulti sa imong pastor nga dili ti kasultian kay tanaw na ako kung submit ka sa imong pastor. So na yung mga yung anak na isulti si Lord sa imong leader. Nga may unika. Ah, magsiksa ko, wag mo ko yung hindi Lord. <laughs> Or let's all fast as a congregation. Pastor, mag-six ako. <laughs> Ingon to si Sado sa una, nakadumbrong ko si Sado sa una, ano siya nga. If mag-ingon ganin yung pastor, senior pastor, nga mag-fast sa tanan, ayun na, pag-ingon nga mag-six ako. <laughs> Hanap si Sado. The Lord told your pastor to do that. If he hurts wrong, I will judge him. 
But if you will not submit, I will judge you. Wala man ito nagtudloog sa iyo pang pastor, no? Na mag-fast. Sa iyo ito, dili. Dili. Kasi yung sag, sige, ato mo gawas. Pampo sila, akin sa inyo mo po sila. Wala man siya na. <laughs> It's another thing. In as much as God is sending Elijah to restore the hearts of the father to their children and the children to their fathers, in Malachi 4, the enemy is in the business also of sending the spirit of Jezebel to destroy family, biological, and spiritual. That's why we're talking about covenant relationship for quite a while. And some meetings are grabe good ang lihok sa enemy karun that he is trying, trying to break covenant relationships. By the way, discipleship is a covenant relationship. It's a commitment. There's a difference between cell group member and a disciple. Cell group member, aman ka, cell group member lang ka, aten lang ka kung ganun sa gusto, or convenient, or are you a disciple? You are committed. There's going to be a final showdown in <laughs> of <laughs> Elijah and Jezebel in our days, in the last days. That Malachi 4, 5, and 6 does not talk about just dilit lang to siya, biological lang, uh, parents, children. It talks also of spiritual. Parents and children. Children and parents. Which side are you? <laughs> The benefits of submission and the consequence of defiance. Number one, uh, sure ko napay lain na nino pero so far mora niya ako malis. Submission brings protection or under you are undercover. Defiance is putting yourself in danger. Number two, si kwan mo na I I recommend you to read the book Undercover by John Beaver. It talks about submission. Meaning you are undercover na kay covering ba? Kung wala kay ginasubmitan, open, you're vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. Your leader is not just there to teach you the word, they're also there to pray for you. Amen? Number two, submission promotes. Maningin ko na ako Defiance demotes. Number three, submission is a future investment. Defiance is a future bankruptcy. Let me give you an example about this. You'll never know how painful it is for a leader ngayang cell group and disciple dili mo submit not until you become one, a disciple. And I tell you, what you reap and what you saw, you will reap. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And I tell you, you cannot survive going through. Imagine this. Wala kay ginasubmit ang leader, pero naa kay under you. Hindi na ko na masabtan. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Kung naa kay cell group, pero wala kay leader. <laughs> Ay lang kayang ginoon, no? Kaysa gina, ginahimot yung puntang leader, mas kagdagan kita, o tina, kakulangon ba? Nga naman, para ma-realize na ito, siya itong gibuhat sa itong leader ba? <laughs> Kung wala ni mo, wakal ni, Kung imo siyang gi-defy, imo siyang gi-speak kag anything against him, pag-abot nga ikaw na ma-leader, nga dagan pa kag-weakness, I tell you, makita na sa imo cell group, nga dagan kag-weakness, he will do, that person will do the same thing what you did to your leader. Tell me if I'm wrong. For those... Ako, there are there are a point in my life that na dili ko submitted, and I reap what I saw. <laughs> That's why it's very important. Submission comes blessing, defiance comes curse. Defiance is rebellion. Submission gains authority. 
I tell you, if you have been so, if you have been submitted to your leader, you will gain authority over those who are under you. And you know why? What's what? What's one thing I'm so sub, I'm submitted to my pastor and leader because he himself had done it. I've heard a lot of story about his life. Testing of his submission. He's not yet perfect, but I've seen the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. And so I, myself, I want also, Lord, to have that, the work of that Holy Spirit in my life. We don't submit because they are perfect. We submit for our benefits. And it's because it is what the Lord says. First Timothy, I think, 7, 4, 7. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And it will flee from you. Submission unites. Defiance divides. One reason there are churches divides, divided because lack or failed to submit leaders. Who then is the faithful servant? Now we, I hope that I made it clear. One thing that makes that servant wicked and be thrown into that uh, gnashing where there is gnashing that in that place that of darkness and there's gnashing of teeth is because he failed to submit to his leader. Hello? <laughs> who then is the faithful servant? Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master? Now, na notice nyo, nagkuan lang ko sa isa ka, ano, no? Isa ka part ba? And I believe this is uh, uh, big issues in the churches today. Whom his master has set over his household to give them their food, will of the father at the proper time. Those who heed God's word promises God's will, who endured and remain faithful, bear fruit and proven character. Faithfulness is not just staying for years. It is multiplying. It is bearing fruit. It is having the character proven and tested. Antos ka. Ay, nag... Sana, nag... Sige, itong endure ganit. Lahutay ka. Grabe, kapila nagkatistingan. Grabe, hindi mong lahutay, pero... Ang question is, are we... Are you bearing fruit? Are we multiplying? For the years you've stayed here, are you multiplying? Are we bearing fruit? Is our character is changing from glory to glory, from faith to faith? Sons of Zadok, remember the Sons of Zadok priest by Pastor Jen? The faithful high priest, a priest, uh, they are the Levites, right? The Levites. Nga, nagfamin, nagfamin, wala na wala na offering sa temple. Ang uban mga priest, ng lakaw na, na namalin og lain temple. And then, nabilin sila dito, the sons of Zadok, ang offering siguro nga pigeon. Bahin-bahin na lang nato ni pigeon. <laughs> but, I believe they've never, they've, I don't know, grabe siguro ilang pagsulay, pero they've never kanang take any action of defying God. They just stayed for years until the Lord brings that revival. And that day, the Lord says, only the sons of Dadok the ones who can enter and minister into the most holy place. But those priests nga nang langyaw sa panahon nga naifamin nga namalik dito sila taman sa outer courts. 
the faithful ones are those who did not just stay. I believe they did not they didn't just stay. Their character was being tested during the time and they remained faithful to the Lord. And that's why the Lord commended them. You can minister to me in the holy place, the most holy place. But those who did not submit and run away, they're in the outer courts. But that's how even in times, yeah, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance, and patient endurance will refine our character, and proven character leads us back to hope. I pray that we will not be one of those now offend can Jesus Christ when Jesus was talking about communion. We've been having communion here every Friday. And Jesus talks about communion and they were like, what? Eat your body? That's evil. <laughs> Drink your blood? That's evil. John 6, 66. Many are offended. Pugibiaan nila si Jesus. John 66. Basta akin na, John 66. John 666. Daghan na offend na nga time. Huwag nang, nang, they did not follow the Lord anymore. Faithful people endures. But not all who endures are faithful. You know what? Dilipot pa sabot nag-endure ka, faithful na ka? Pero ang mga faithful, may endure na. E pwede mo na naglautay ka, pero nabay bunga. Unsa man yung mga endure A call to remain faithful in Jude 1, 20-23. But, but you, my delightfully loved, loved friends, constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith. Praying every moment in the Spirit. Fasten your hearts to the love of God. The past months, we are talking about the love of the Father. And receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next, who gives us eternal... Keep being compassionate to those who still have doubts. Hello? Itong mga nagduha-duha pa, be compassionate. Keep being compassionate to them. Next, snatch others out, out of the fire to save them. And then next, be merciful over and over to them. But always couple your mercy with the fear of God. Be extremely careful to keep yourselves from the pollutions of the flesh. Potong sa Hebrews 12, ganiya. Toto, keep ourselves from, toto, uh, not to be entangled with sin. Dilita pa hikot, dilita pa hawid sa sala. That might disqualify us. Naman tatay camp, no? A call. Okay, naman tayo a call to repent. A call to qualify. Naman a call to remain faithful. <laughs> The secret to endurance is the end or death of ourselves. Because it is when the Lord takes over in his own strength and not yours. It is his strength that helps us endure. Faithfulness is enduring while God killing us softly. <laughs> killing me softly with his song. Killing my whole life <laughs> with his words. Killing me softly. <laughs> Say kantana gani? Kalimut pag say kantana. For the purpose of being Christ-like, the more we die, the more we endure. Amen. I remember kato niya na ko Lord na ako gina naglawutay grabe ako kung ano niya na ko Lord I'm giving up, and I heard him. Now it's my turn. <laughs> it is when dying that God take His turn. Because ev because whenever nga naapagyapon atong self atong ginakuan, he cannot take his turn. Amen? The more we die, the more we endure, the more we remain faithful, fruitful, and character proven. Revelations 14.13, after gingon niya atong a call for endurance, yun siya. Write this, blessed are the dead 
Tanawad ay matapad. Patay na ba na? <laughs> Blessed are the dead, the ones dying in the Lord from now on. Diba? Ang patay, di naman na mo reklamo. Ang patay, di naman na mo sukol. Ang patay, di... <laughs> Praise the Lord, no? Kay dying, yung gingon, no? Kuan ba? Process. Ongoing process. Will you answer the call? It really requires, faithfulness requires a total surrender. It requires submission to God and to authority of men. Will you be faithful even if others are not? Faithful even if others cannot? Faithful even if you don't understand? Faithful even if you don't have or enough resources? Faithful even if you don't hear God? Faithful even if you were left alone? Faithful even if you don't see the promise? Will you be faithful even if it seems everyone is against you? Will you be faithful even if it seems like your leader is against you, harsh or unreasonable? Faithful even to the point of death? Wait, I'm on a little less. So God is calling for endurance and faithfulness. But again, it requires so much. It requires our life to be surrendered. That's why it's a race between you and yourself. Because Pastor Joseph said, our greatest enemy is not Satan. It's ourself. That's why what God is killing is ourselves. Kita ang iyang ginakuan. Satan is already doomed for destruction. Amen? Did you get something tonight? If you have a question, ask your leader. <laughs> or you can ask me after. Let's pray. Let's examine our hearts tonight before the Lord. He knows our hearts very well. He knows the movement of our hearts, what's going on in our hearts. I believe the Lord has dealt something with us tonight. And He requires our response. Just as what Cherry released tonight, will you place that on the altar? If you have an issue with your discipler or leader or a discipler with an issue of his disciples, he asked the Lord, Lord, what can I do? What can I do with this? Give me a humble heart. Lord, we need your grace. We need your grace today and onwards, oh God where we walk in that process of dying to self. As you are calling for endurance and faithfulness, Lord. God, we want, to, we want to enlist ourselves, Lord. We want to be part of those who endured. We want to be part of God whom you have called, oh God, for faithfulness. Lord, as you are walking through and fro, oh God, towards the earth, God, may you find our hearts faithful, completely yours. God, there's so much that's happening around us, Lord God. And sometimes, Lord God, we tend to focus on those things rather than to focus on what you had said. And sometimes, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for failure to submit to you and to submit to the authority. Father, I pray and I declare that there's restoration of spiritual fathers to their children and spiritual children to their fathers. Father, I pray you find faithful ones in this place. Qualify us, Lord. We cannot qualify ourselves, Lord. We need you.
for us to qualify to be one of the faithful and to be one of those who endured, O oh God, in these last days. Let it be, Lord, that according to Hebrews 12, O oh God, to fix our eyes on Jesus. And let it be, Lord, that every test we go through, every trials we go through, even in the wilderness, Lord, may we always have reason to pursue, to stay faithful in your word, in your presence, even in times, Lord God, that you will rebuke and correct us and discipline us personally and even through our leaders, O oh God. Father, we thank you for giving us leaders. They may be imperfect, God, but they have been, Lord God, an example of the work of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, in their lives, O oh God, in, even in our lives, Lord God. We've seen how you work in their lives, and you're not yet done, Father God, with us. You're not yet done to each one of us here, O oh Lord God. Father, I pray that we will endure to the end, and not just endure, be faithful to the end. Thank you, O oh God, for your word tonight, Lord. Be glorified and be magnified even as we respond to you, Lord, in humility, knowing that your word will save us. Thank you, O oh God. Seal this prayer, Father, by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. This we pray in his name. Amen.